Hi guys, um, we're starting our unit on area and perimeter. Um, I know that we have done this before, at least you have done this before in, in sixth grade, um, but we're going to kind of kick it up a notch and take it to another level. So the first part of this, um, I'm just going to go through and review how to find um, the perimeter area of these certain shapes. All right, so the rectangle. We all know that rectangles, perimeters, just means the distance around. So that formula would be perimeter equals 2 times the length plus the width. Okay? And then the area is base times height. All right. The square has three sides that are congruent. So the perimeter of a square is 4 times s because the square has four sides. And the area is going to be s squared because you have two sides that equal s, the base and the height. When you multiply them together, you get squared. All right, triangle. There's no formula for perimeter because you're just adding the three sides. Okay, so the area is one half times the base times the height, or you could also see it as base times height divided by two. They're the same thing. And a parallelogram is exactly like a rectangle, so area is base times height. Now the only difference with that is if you have a parallelogram, just to kind of show, okay, in order to know the height, you got to know the perpendicular height, okay, because that's how tall the parallelogram is. Okay, so let's do some practice problems. All right, this first one, it's pretty simple. It's telling you that it's a rectangle. You know it's a rectangle because of the congruency marks and because of the, um, uh, the right angles. Okay, so first thing I want you to find perimeter. So remember, perimeter is 2 times the length plus the width. So that's equal to 2 times 15 plus 7. So that's 2 multiplied by 22. So that means that the perimeter is equal to 44 centimeters. And we have to make sure we're putting the units um, on there also. All right, area is base times height. So we have the base of 15 multiplied by 7. So that means our area is 105 centimeters squared. Okay, now the distinction to make is remember perimeter is just centimeters. And if you could see it, it'd be centimeters to the first power, right? And then once you multiply two centimeters together, you get centimeters squared. All right, so a triangle. Now this is what I'm talking about, about kicking it up a notch. So in order to, um, to solve this, we need to know what the height is. But in order to find the height, we know that this is also a right angle, so we have a right triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So if we say that this is x, mm -hmm. right? So we would do 15 squared mm -hmm. plus x squared equals 17 squared, yeah. right? Um, and then after that, you basically get x squared equals 64. So that means that x has to be equal to 8. Okay, so I'm going to put that there. So this is equal to 8. All right, now we have enough information now to find the area, but not the perimeter. So the perimeter, we need to know this side length. So now we're going to do 8 squared plus 6 squared. All right, so we're using Pythagorean theorem to figure that out. Okay, so 100 equals x squared. So x is equal to 10. So we'll put that here. This is equal to 10. All right, so when we're figuring out the perimeter, all we're going to do is add. So the perimeter is 17 plus 10 plus this side length right here, 15 plus 6, is um, 21. And when you add those together, you should get 48. Now, it doesn't tell you um, whether it's centimeters or millimeters, so we can just put units, okay? All right, and then for the area is going to be one half the base times the height. So the height is 8, and our base is 21. Okay, so when you do that, you end up with 84. 
and again it's units my units squared okay all right okay square so we know it's a square so the first thing you know is that oh, let me pick a different color that this side is 14 this side is 14 and this side is 14 okay so perimeter is equal to mm -hmm. 4 times the side length so 4 times 14 <clears throat> which is equal to 56 and our unit is inches <clears throat> and our area is equal to the side squared because it's the base times the height so 14 squared which equals 196 inches squared okay so that was just a basic review of area and perimeter now we're gonna kinda go <clears throat> a different way okay okay now in this question we're looking for the height so when you've done area before you've always kind of relied on um, excuse me you've always kind of relied on just knowing the base knowing the height or maybe knowing the area and working backwards but remember we've learned a bunch of stuff about trigonometry so we're able to find um, the different information so if you look first of all we're looking for the height okay no. we don't really have a way of getting to that height right so we're gonna have to rely on um, maybe some angles okay so let's look at the information that we do have we know that in this triangle right here let me draw that better in this triangle right here we have got two side lengths right and we're dealing with this triangle over here we know that this angle we know that this angle right here is congruent to that angle. So if we can get the measure of the angle in the top right, um, sorry, on the top right side is congruent to the one on the bottom left. Okay, so we look at that right triangle and we see that we've got um, adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's sine. So it's going to be sine of x. is equal to 16 over 24, right? We know that that's the same as saying the inverse of sine, okay, equals x. And when you do that, put that in your calculator, make sure your calculator is in degrees, you end up getting x equals 42 degrees. So that means that this angle right here is 42 degrees. So that means we also know that this angle is 42 degrees. Okay, so now that we know the angle and we've got the hypotenuse, we can solve for the height. So we've got opposite over adjacent, so we know that it's the sine of 42 degrees is equal to the height over 15. Remember the variables on the top so that means that our height is equal to 10. Okay, so when you guys are doing problems, I need you to look at them and pull information that you can get. And sometimes when you do something, it might not be exactly what you need to do, but it gets you going in the right direction. All right, so let's move on to the next one. All right, here we go. Angle of the rectangle. I'm sorry, area of the rectangle. So, remember, it is base times height. All right, so we have one angle, and we've got one side, and we've got the opposite and the adjacent, so we know that it's tangent. So the tangent of 53 degrees is equal to 23 over mm -hmm. x. Remember when it's set up like this? Oh, you guys have to give me a, give me a second because I did it wrong. Give me one sec. All right, what you get from that is x is equal to, um, and I just rounded it to 7.3. So we were solving for this side, so this is 7.3. Now we're just going to plug in our area formula. So we know area is equal to the base times the height. Okay, so a lot of what we're doing is not about the area part. It's about how you get the information to find the area. So 398.6, and remember it's centimeters squared. All right. 
Okay, an isosceles triangle has a perimeter of 64. If the base of the triangle is 24 centimeters long, find the area of the triangle. Okay, so again, we're looking at that. We need to find the height in order to do anything. So again, you're going to look at stuff that you can do. And right away, you know it's an isosceles triangle, so you can go ahead and draw in your altitude. And remember, when you draw an altitude from the vertex angle to the base of an isosceles triangle, it splits that base in half. So this is now... 12. So we're going to solve for the height. Okay, so to do that we are going to use Pythagorean Theorem. So we know that 12 squared plus x squared equals 20 squared. So that's 44. Okay, so x is equal to, <clears throat> excuse me, Okay, so x squared is equal to 256, so that means that x is equal to 16. So now we're just going to um, multiply the base times the height. So remember it's 1 half base times height, so that's 1 half 16 times 24, and that gives us <clears throat> 192 and it says centimeters, so centimeters squared. All right. All right, this one's giving you the area of the triangle, and the base is 28 inches. We want to find the length of the height. So, I mean, I always like to draw a picture just because it helps. So we know that the base is 28 inches. We don't know the height, but we know that the area is 172.2 inches squared. Okay, the best way to start off is you always start off with your formula. Area is equal to one half the base times the height. Okay, we know the area, so that's 172.2 is equal to one half the base, which is 28, and the height, we don't know. Okay, so now we're just going to multiply so we get 172.2 1 half times 28 is 14 times h. And then to solve for h, we're going to divide both sides by 14. And when you do that, you get that the height is equal to 12.3 inches. And remember, it's just one length, so it's just going to be inches. All right, last question. Same thing. We're doing, let's do our rectangle. We know we're talking about a rectangle and we know its area. So area equals 238. Okay, the height is 14. So we want to find the length of the base. So we want to find this. And then the perimeter. Okay, so we know again that area is 1 half the base times the height. The area is 238 equals 1 half and I'm just going to switch the order. The height is 14, and we don't know the base. So that's 7 times b, and then to get that, we divide by 7. So b, the base, <clears throat> is equal to 17. All right, so that means we know that this is 17, and then we know for perimeter, it's going to be 2 times the length plus the width. Okay, when you do that computation, you should get 62 centimeters. Okay, now this is just designed to be a review. Um, it's just about finding those lengths that are missing and using information or skills that we've learned throughout the year. And I'm going to encourage you, just like every other time, that you need to be showing your work, you need to be writing each step, because when we get further along in this unit, if you're not showing your steps, you're going to have a really, really difficult time because there's going to be a lot of numbers everywhere. So you need to take this time to practice showing your work and following your steps. All right, um, you guys have a good night, and I will see you tomorrow.